How's it going, everybody? I appreciate you tuning into my next episode. So I want to start by saying that I am not a Jetta guy. I am a guy working on a Jetta. And I'm trying to help a friend of mine. He ended up purchasing this car, and I feel like a lot of people end up being in the same boat that he was in. He's a Jetta fan, and he always wanted one of these. So he found this awesome car. It's a six-speed manual, the 1.8. Uh, he got a really good deal on it. And then after about two weeks of driving it, it started smoking really bad and losing power. Unfortunately, it turns out that the turbo is bad. Now I'm gonna have some future videos showing how to diagnose a bad turbo and how you know there might possibly be a bad turbo on a Jetta. He went on the forums and just like most of you, you go on a forum, you try and figure out a way to, you know, maybe possibly upgrade the car. If you have to spend the money anyway, you know, you kind of want to get the best for your money. You start asking questions and you start asking, hey, uh, what does it take to put a big turbo? Oh, we don't want to do a big turbo. You have this reason, that reason. It's going to be $10,000 to do it the right way. It's going to be $5,000 to do it the right way. And then you have the guy coming out of the woodwork. Oh, uh, three grand to come down this weekend. We can do it this stressing weekend. you out because you don't really know what you should do. You don't know how expensive it's going to be. You, you don't know what it would, what kind of budget you need to have. And then you start researching, okay, well, what are other options? Well, I can go put a, a stock one back in. You find a couple on eBay that are really cheap. Maybe I'll throw one of those in. You could take it to a mechanic or maybe it's something I can try. And then you go, but I really, since I have to spend the money, I want to put something better in. So what's the upgrade? And you find out that you can do a KO4 swap, you know, something from an Audi car. So then you start researching the KO4 swap. And then what happens is you find out that that turbo was used on uh, the, the 2.0 and I believe the 1.8 between Audi, Volkswagen, I know the Beetle, it comes in the Beetle, it comes in the Audi TT. I mean, it's used in a lot of cars. So the problem is you don't know which ones to buy. What I did was, I, I can't say this is the right way of doing it, but this is the path we're taking. As I learn, you guys are gonna be able to learn. So this will be video number one explaining what I bought. So what I did buy was I picked up the a long tube header. I picked up this KL4. Now the reason I chose this one was when you put the header on, the intake wraps around the header. So uh, this is something I recorded on a later date while I was filming that video for uh, showing what you need for a KO4 swap on a Jetta. There's two things that I incorrectly said you needed. I did say that that snout would pop on, but I have footage of me having to modify that snout to fit the KO4. That's the original induction snout for the KO3. Also, one other thing you're going to need is I incorrectly pointed out the intercooler pipe. You are going to have to upgrade this elbow. It is roughly a two inch elbow, uh, but you're gonna have to change this to a larger size to um, mount to the OEM intercooler system. So I wanted to add that to this video. So sorry if this video is pieced together in kind of a crappy way. Some of the stuff I did before I started working on the car and some of the stuff I'm showing you as I'm working on the car in real time. So uh, thanks again, everybody. If you look at this flange, this is for this style engine. You know it is because of how it's shaped and where it's located. This flange can be found on the other side of the turbo on other model cars. I believe a lot of the Audis have that flange on the opposite side. And then you're gonna need a downpipe and a catless turbo back. Uh, you can do a catted one too. And then the other thing you're gonna run into is, uh, how do I get it tuned? So a lot of people talk about, oh, if you're going to do a KO4 swap, because of the existing tune in the car, it should be fine. The computer should auto adjust for the new turbo. Other people say, no, 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 you need a fuel pressure regulator. You're gonna need a tune, you need a boost controller. They're both right and they're both wrong. If, if you want the most performance out of your turbo, then you definitely want to run something that's adjustable and you want to run a tune, you want to bring it to a dyno tuner and they probably can squeeze a lot more power out of that turbo than you would just putting it on the car. Will it run with the turbo on there? Probably. Will it run right? I can't answer that question. I've never done it before. What I can tell you is what we're going to do is uh, the company that tuned this car previously is Euro Customs. I did contact them and it turns out that they actually are quite knowledgeable. This is not a plug for them. They're just the only company that seems to answer their phone or get back to me. They specifically have a uh, email style or, or another style where you can send the ECM and they'll mail the ECM back ready to go. You tell them what's done to the car, they'll tune it and then you can plug it back in. Uh, the, where you get to the ECM is actually underneath this cowl. It's right in the center. 
you have to pull the wiper arms and you have to pull the connectors and then the ECM literally just slides right out. Now, if you're going to be the type of person that's just gonna slap this turbo on and call it a day, I do recommend using an air fuel ratio gauge, a wide band version. I'm going to have a video tutorial coming up on installing an AEM wideband. I use them in all my cars that are turboed or uh, supercharged. At least if you are not going to do your tune, you can, you can watch the air fuel ratios. You can get one of them for about 160 bucks, and I'm going to show you how to you know, get it into the car, get it into the exhaust and wire it up. It's going to be a future video, so, so stay tuned. Uh, like and subscribe so you can see that uh, video. The other thing up. I notice is a lot of the tuned cars don't have a mass airflow sensor in the picture. So I think what they might be doing is converting over to a MAP sensor. A MAP sensor reads uh, intake pressure. I believe they use a uh, four bar for the upgrade and they remove the mass airflow. I'm going to try and keep the mass airflow sensor. I like cars that run with mass airflow. They seem to run a little better, but you know, I'm sure other people could argue MAP is better. I have no idea. I will find out. Like I said, I'm learning as I go along and I'm bringing you guys down that journey. So the next thing will be, uh, let's go for a spin. So here we are, we're in my buddy's Jetta. I wanted to take it for a spin so you can see what it was like. Uh, so, so what's the like about the Jetta? It makes turbo noises. Who doesn't love that? Unfortunately, this one also makes broken turbo noises. It spools up really nice. It has a blow-off valve. We love the blow-off valve. But unfortunately, it also gives a little bit of a clatter every once in a while, and you can hear maybe something's wrong with the seal or the bearing inside the turbo. What I'm going to be doing is, you'll see on the next video that I'm going to be pulling this... Uh, existing turbo out and after i pull the existing turbo out i'm going to be checking what's known as the shaft end play uh, on this i don't know if it's a bearing style or like if it's a roller bearing or if it's a friction bearing if it's a friction bearing and you start getting play oil leaks past and then uh, it blows the seals out sometimes there's not even a seal sometimes there's just the oil rides and the tolerances are so close the oil can't make its way through uh, the other thing I'm going to be doing is uh, checking to see if possibly something else could be leaking into the turbo. It is There is a chance that this turbo might actually be fine, but something else might actually have a problem on the car. One thing I'm going to be doing is installing an air-fuel ratio gauge in this car. The air-fuel ratio gauge reads your air-fuel ratio as you're driving. So like right now, I'm just cruising around. As I'm cruising around, you'll actually see it fluctuate. It could be as as high as like a 13 14 maybe a 15 or as low as like a 12 sometimes an 11 it's just going to fluctuate however when you're full throttle or part throttle you're going to see more steady numbers on that gauge the steady numbers are what you're looking for when you're full throttle you want to see around a 10 to an 11 depending on the engine i don't know what the optimal range on this car is but i at least want to know what's going on inside those cylinders so i will be doing a video on installing that and i will be doing a video on reading it while driving the next thing we're going to be doing potentially would be a boost controller the boost controller is designed to read the engine's vacuum and boost and based on your desired uh, boost level you can adjust it up or down from there the tunability is important when you're trying to build power out of a car and the more tunability you can give a tuner the better So it's just a short drive. I don't want to keep driving this in case uh, the turbo is so bad it could potentially fall apart because God forbid the impellers come off on a turbo, you could shoot them into your intake and damage your engine. So here's the Jetta. This is the next project that we're going to be doing. I'm trying to get this car done for my friend in the next two weeks or so. He may even come down and help us, so he might be on the channel as well. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who likes and subscribes. I really appreciate it and stay tuned for more updates. There should be a couple videos coming out on this turbo work and I appreciate everybody who's growing with me and I appreciate everybody who helps me grow. Uh, the support is important, the feedback is important and I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks again everyone. Have a very nice day.